the reconstructed, lifelong relationship Terry Lovelace had with his abductors, including an alien-human hybrid female, describes a pattern that is not unique at all, but common and on a massive scale, a systematic interference into human lives. Let's explore. Hi everyone, and welcome to Project Blue Book, where we explore all things unidentified. I am Thor, and thanks for tuning in. It is well understood that credible testimony is defined as military, government, police, aviation, like pilots, astronauts, as well as agents and servicemen in key positions. Those are considered the most valuable testimonies because they may be speaking from first-hand experience or access to classified information, as well as their expertise. Then there is the account of individuals with credentials that make it very difficult to cast a doubt, because it's just incomprehensible they would be making it up, without gain and so much to lose. Such is the story of Terry Lovelace, first a serviceman, then a career lawyer, an assistant attorney general for the state of Vermont and the U.S. territory of American Samoa, president of the American Samoa Bar Association, a member of the medical practice board of the state of Vermont. It makes his story all the more strange that he didn't really come forward until 2017 when he first participated in a UFO event and in 2018 when he published his book, Incident at Devil's Den, A True Story. But his experience dates back to his early childhood. He started having heart problems in 2005, and in 2012, he noticed his knee was going numb. He had it examined to discover a piece of metal lodged deep within his tissue, the size of a fingernail, and no signs of an entrance, scar, or torn tissue surrounding it, as if it had always been there. It had two tiny wires attached, pointing up into his leg. Doctors had no explanation as to what this was. Nightmares had long before began creeping into his life and he had no explanation but vague memories of intrusive examinations surrounding a camping trip back in 1977 he and his buddy took to Devil's Den State Park in Arkansas. As these nightmares continued and his medical issues mounted, it was time to revisit his fragmented memories to see how deep this rabbit hole really went. He did have a conscious memory of an event in January of 1975. He had joined the U.S. Air Force as a medic straight out of high school, and his post was set at Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, home of the 351st Strategic Missile Wing, responsible for a number of Minuteman II nuclear-armed ICBM silos, spread out across the rural farmland. He was working a night shift with his buddy, he only refers to as Toby, between 11 p.m. and 8 a.m., driving an ambulance when a call came in at 2 a.m. that a missile technician had fallen into one of the silos about 18 miles across to the soybean farm fields. They headed over as fast as they could, but when they got there, the place was crawling with armed military police. They stopped Lovelace and told him not to go any further. Lovelace looked around, wondering what the commotion was all about, when his attention fixated on a black diamond-shaped object about the size of a van hovering over the Kilo 5 missile silo. The strange object just stood there in the middle of thin air, for at least 15 minutes, he recalls, before shooting straight up into the sky at lightning speed and disappearing. No one had done anything. No shots had been fired. Everyone just stared at it as if in a state of suspended animation until it was gone. This event played out near identical to a Malmstrom Air Force Base incident of 1967 witnessed by multiple servicemen in front of the base entrance and above missile silos, a topic for another episode. Lovelace and Toby were debriefed and firmly ordered not to talk about this incident, 
They were told it was an experimental helicopter, but both knew what they saw was no helicopter. And oddly, they didn't dwell on it or even talk about it further. And soon it was out of sight, out of mind. Until 1975, still posted at Whiteman with his buddy Toby, they decided to go on a camping trip for a weekend. Toby was heavily into stargazing and Lovelace was an amateur photographer, which makes what happened even more bizarre. Toby suggested Devil's Den State Park across the state line in Arkansas, a couple of hours drive due south. It sat on a high plateau, perfect for nature photography as well as stargazing. It was ideal. The bizarre part was that the whole point of going was nature photography. Yet, for an unknown reason at the time, Terry Lovelace forgot his photography kit. He left it on the kitchen table at his house before they left. He had put it all together in preparation, and then he just left it. Let me weave this detail into the story a bit later. Upon arrival, they had immediately gone hiking, and thereafter, instead of camping in the main campgrounds where everyone else would, they decided to drive deep into the park, away from everyone. No one was supposed to go, until they came upon a clearing in the forest, the most remote spot within this most remote of state parks. They were completely alone and set up their tent. At about 9 p.m., Toby noticed three stars in the sky, forming a perfect triangle, and then they started moving in perfect unison, holding their triangle formation throughout. He realized this had to be a single object with three lights. And now Lovelace saw it too, as it grew larger and came in their direction. It became clear it was a solid single object with lights on three edges of a perfect triangle, matte black in color. As it moved across the sky, it blocked out the light of all of the stars, just like the football field-sized triangle did over Phoenix, Arizona on March 13, 1998, a topic for another episode. The object was now directly above them, and it was huge. Lovelace remembers, as it flew towards them, their fear had grown, but now, as it hovered directly above them, they were just calm and relaxed about it. And yet another strange detail Lovelace recalls is the forest. It had been teeming with sounds of birds, frogs, and crickets. Now fell completely silent, like vacuum, while the object just hovered above. The next emotion Lovelace remembers was that of a complete disinterest in the object. They were tired, beyond drowsy. They felt sedated and just wanted to go into the tent and fall asleep. It was 3 a.m. when Lovelace woke up again, as if sobered up from his sedated state, to multiple bright colored lights filling his tent. He remembered the object. He was scared, but pushed Toby aside to take a peek outside. And there it was, hovering above, having moved away from the original spot, and he now realized its enormous dimensions. Still hovering perhaps 30 feet above ground, he estimated the craft's sides to be the length of a city block that would be hundreds of feet for each arm of the triangle. And the thickness of it, the height, probably the size of a five-story building. And yet, it just stood there, humming quietly in the sky. That's when he noticed children roaming around on the grass below, a few hundred feet away from their tent. And then he realized these weren't children at all. They were humanoids, small and gray, with big heads. For Lovelace, a classic alien encounter story was forming. Classic, because it shares experiences we will soon discover, told by a retired assistant attorney general, remembering from his days in service. He watched the humanoid creatures roam about, and then they walked into a beam of light descending from the craft, where they dematerialized, and disappeared before his eyes. Lovelace and Toby had by now regained their sense of fear, and they packed up and left. Lovelace remembers having rashes all over his body after this weekend, as if he had sunburned badly, and didn't understand how that was possible. Within two days, they were both hospitalized by their base command with severe burns and dehydration symptoms. Radiation poisoning, however, was not considered. 
That's when three officials from the Office of Special Investigations paid them a visit. They were most interested in retrieving Lovelace's camera and simply did not believe he had left it at home. They somehow knew he was an amateur photographer. They visited them several times and interrogated them separately as well as together. But their story never changed. Lovelace was diagnosed with PTSD that his psychiatrist found odd because Lovelace had never seen a battle. Where did his post-traumatic stress come from? Toby, on the other hand, was reassigned and they were ordered not to have contact with each other until the investigation was closed. Toby began drinking heavily, he divorced his wife and was discharged from the U.S. Air Force. He died homeless on the streets of Flint, Michigan, just over a decade later in 1988. Lovelace, on the other hand, has always had an anxiety about open spaces and being alone in the woods, and he does not tolerate darkness anywhere at all. His first hypnotic regression was conducted by a major in the U.S. Air Force, with the officers of the OSI present. More memories came to the surface. He remembered Toby flashing a light at the object, and the object flashing back, first a white beam of light at their campground, then a pencil-thick purple light right at his chest, and he recalled moments on board the craft, a huge hangar inside the craft, where three disc-shaped UFOs were parked side by side, and he remembers thinking, these crafts were different from what he saw at Whiteman Kilo 5 missile silo years earlier. These were disc-shaped, classic UFOs. He saw humanoid creatures, like the children-sized aliens he remembered seeing in the meadow, and he also saw what looked like ordinary humans in uniform with insignia he did not recognize. It was tan in color. A tall alien seemed to be in charge. The children-sized ones were workers, he thought. And then there was an even taller insect-looking being, a praying mantis that just observed, and Lovelace knew not to look at it. Doing so made him feel naked to his soul. There were aquariums as well, tanks up against the wall, and inside of them there were reptile-looking creatures with strange eyes, he remembers, and he also saw humans, full-grown, floating in the liquid. One of them even looked over at him. They made eye contact, and he somehow concluded it looked human, but it wasn't human. There were hundreds of those, he said, on board the craft. He also remembered painful medical procedures and their apparent indifference to his pain. They were more frustrated over his whining than careful and considerate with the instrument they were using, tools hanging from a low ceiling above his head as he lay unable to move, restrained. And a voice in his head kept asking, why are you screaming? You know us. You know we're not going to hurt you. Why are you screaming? There's lots to unpack here. The fear emotion seems to not be understood by them at all, nor how difficult it is for us to control it. They emphasize reason, where emotion seems to not exist at all. But aside from that, the statement, you know us, you know we're not going to hurt you, what does that tell us? As Lovelace was to piece together himself, this had in fact been an ongoing relationship since his childhood. He soon would remember small creatures visiting him in his bedroom at night. He called them monkeys when he was a kid, only eight years old. And he remembers a humanoid, a four-foot-tall female creature. She kept visiting him again and again which convinced him later on that him forgetting the camera kit, them going to the off-limits part of the Devil's Den State Park, as well as the apathy regarding the hovering object, it was all in fact suggested, directed, orchestrated. They didn't have their encounter by chance at all. That's how he also came to believe the objects in his leg were implants, it was all part of this lifelong monitoring of him for a purpose he did not understand until he had a chance to ask her. One night in the mid-2010s, that is recently, Lovelace found himself in a chair in his living room. He never sleepwalked, but this was a conscious awakeness. He just sat there 
staring at the familiar hybrid female sitting in a chair facing him. She had long, fine hands, only four digits on each hand, large almond-shaped eyes, sunglasses to cover them, a pencil-thin neck, and dressed in black but with a bright red scarf. She warned him not to come forward with his information. This was right before his first conference appearance, before the release of his book. He asked her why. In perfect English, she explained, what he knew was crucially important to her hosts and his own government. It had to be kept secret. Her hosts wanted it that way. He asked why she called them hosts. She answered, you call them aliens? I call them hosts because they are not alien to me, suggesting she, this hybrid humanoid, did not consider herself one of them either. And then she said, your government may kill you if you continue to go public. There was a pause. He lastly asked if the implant in his leg were the work of her hosts. And she said he had implants in both of his legs for a variety of reasons that would not cause him any harm. Another footnote to remember is the description of the Triangle UFO. Lovelace describes it is consistent with so many other sightings in Belgium 1980, Kassel, Germany 2014, Melbourne, Australia 2012, Arizona 2015, Chicago O'Hare 2008, off the coast of Florida 2017, and on board the International Space Station 2007. Why did it take him 40 years to come forward? He needed to wait, he said, until retirement, so as not to risk his career and livelihood as a lawyer, his reputation as an assistant attorney general and a chairman of a state bar association. Just imagine the amount of stories untold by persons afraid to lose their place in the world. We'll be there, however, to listen and believe when the conditions are ripe and when courage overcomes fear. You can watch and listen to this and other podcasts on Project Blue Book, where we explore all things unidentified. Each day, let's practice compassion and kindness. And please subscribe. I am Thor, and thanks for tuning in. See you next time.